So, Sean, you know, you posed an interesting question last time I got to talk to you about the phone. And so tell me a little bit about the perspective. I mean, I know we have to measure ROI because there's some people in the organization that want to hear it. But when you held up your iPhone, you said, what's the ROI of a phone? Yeah, I, it's, you know, I'm not going to let anybody off the hook for doing math. Right. We all have to do math. Yes. But the truth is sometimes when we're asked the ROI question, we're not really being asked the math question. We're, being, we're facing resistance. And yeah. we're being asked the question. We're, we're facing it's, it's resistance. It's resistance in disguise. Yes, it's a clever way of, of resisting change is right. to ask an ROI question. So it always got me thinking about this notion of a phone. And, and, you know, 30, 40 years ago, whenever, we probably wanted to do the ROI of a phone before we rolled out a thousand of them onto desks in, in our office buildings yeah. or before we put in our call center. People are really asked, well, what's the ROI of answering the telephone? Well, we don't ask that question anymore. Why? Because that's a channel it's through obvious. which customers want to have a conversation with us. It's, it's silly not to. And I think the same is true of social media. And why? And in some ways, it's why the metrics have been so wrong and so transactional. Because it's the channel through which our audience is trying to have a relevant conversation with us. What is the ROI? Well, there's a negative ROI in not doing it. It is a going out of business strategy, period not to engage with customers in real-time conversations about the experiences they're having with your brand. And, and that, that's sort of the inexcusable starting point um, where we need to begin that ROI discussion, and then we should go do the math. Right. right. So why do you think customers went from phone or email to Twitter or communities? Yeah, it's a, you know, boy, this is behavioral. I mean, there's, there's a lot about this. Um, and it is an interesting thing. I think some of it is the tools have gotten easier and more accessible and they're on everyone's desktop and broadband is prolific, right? So it, accessibility is high. Sure. But norms have changed, right? My, grand, my grandparents like to send letters to each other, yeah. right? How many of us send letters? How many of us send, the send Pony even Express? thank you notes, right? right. Yeah. Times have changed. People blame demographics. Demographics haven't changed. Mm -mm. People have always wanted to relate. Yes. Right. Well, that's I, the whole thing about the tribe and groups and gangs. Right. I mean, people want to be related. They want to belong. There's a right. sense of belonging. Joseph Campbell wrote about that. Charles Darwin documented <clears throat> this. I mean, if we really want to be, right. you know, a little silly maybe on it, but, but humans are inherently social. And, and so that desire to communicate has always been there. And all we're doing is layering new mechanisms through which people can socialize, share, collaborate with one another. It's not a trend, right? Unless it's a trend that started a few millennium ago. Right. Right. But, but it's not a new thing. I'd, even, it's not even new to be online. I was in CompuServe delivering customer service for Microsoft in 1993. I had a CompuServe account. I helped people you know, solve problems. Well, why do you think people are using Twitter online communities? Do you think it has to do with the fact that when they try traditional channels, they don't get what they need, so now there's this new channel? I think there's some of that, right? Is that there's a, there's a new way to go. I think there's also some frustration mm -hmm. that the channels that have been there haven't met my needs. Right. That the metrics driving call center operators have not been suited towards customer experiences. Average as handle time is four minutes, right. dear agents. Right. So what do the agents do? They don't want to get dinged. So at three minutes and 50 seconds, yeah. they come up with an answer yeah. or they hang up. I mean, if you, this is a little bit extreme, but but you know, you and I both share a lot of experience with call centers, right? But if I took the, the typical scorecard of a call center executive, which often has things like handle time, minutes per incident, number of calls, and satisfaction. Right. And I went, I got crazy and exaggerated my objectives. I could declare success if I drove call volume to one and delivered a perfect experience in it. But what right. did I do? I just eliminated the most intimate relationship that my company gets to have with our users for the sake of the wrong metric. Right. I like the idea, if I were a call center and I was trying to change, mm -hmm. I would encourage call centers not to think about the calls they handle, but the calls they don't handle. Right? Mm -hmm. What is the size of the total addressable audience for us? And then what are the channels through which we can address it? There's phone, there's web self-service, there are communities, there's outreach to other um, islands, if you will, like Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. And so start goaling yourself against cost per point of satisfaction against total addressable audience, yep. then you can become a marketing expense. Then you're doing something powerful. You're delivering experience and the touch points that matter to your users. And if you can translate that into positive brand affinity, 
you got something. You're no longer the, the third person invited to the executive meeting. You're you the wanna, one driving. You want to be, I mean, I, I, I think that we talked a little bit about the chief executive officer and uh, there's a book called that and I'm reading it, meeting with uh, Jenna Bliss mm -hmm. in Los yeah. Angeles in a couple weeks. But I think that one of the, in her book, she talks about power structures. And she says every company has a core power structure. So for instance, maybe it's IT or it's product or it's sales, but really there are very few companies that are customer centric. Yeah. And I think if we were customer centric, some of the things that we do, we would just not do. Oh, the, yeah, you're so right. I mean, the, the aha moment for me on that, especially as a guy that I spent my whole adult life in a product company at, at Microsoft, um, and I look at product companies in this new connected world of sharing and social and, and rating and voting and all these good things. I look at product companies and I, 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 I see them continuing to do product branding. Yep. And the problem with product branding is you're celebrating the wrong thing, right? What do you celebrate? Ship day. Mm. What have you accomplished on the day you ship the product? Few, we're done. Nothing, and right. you just let yourself off the hook. Few, you're done. That's, <clears throat> that's what, what the it feels like, right? Organization says, and and that's just the beginning, right? Because once it ships, then do the customers like it? Did it arrive on time? Can they use it? Are they confused? Did it break? And there's a whole another piece yeah. of product marketing and product dev that that com like I was talking to some of the laptop companies, and one of the number one call drivers was my laptop's broken. How do I fix it? Customer service has gone, this is costing us money yeah. to answer these questions, and we didn't design the laptop. So they went back to uh, the product engineering guys and quality and, and product dev, and they say, hey, we wanted to show you this feedback. Yeah. And they're like, oh my God, thank you so much. We're going to fix this. A year later, they fix it. Customers are thrilled because one, they were heard, two, the company took action, and then they looked at the call drivers. Those so call drivers are gone. Yeah. Hello, cost? Yeah. Agents yeah. are the most expensive reoccurring cost in a contact center. If you want them to be interacting with your customers, how about eliminating some of the issues to begin with that you don't need to have, that you could fix if you yeah. address them. And now how? What now we can talk about word of mouth marketing in the sense of word of mouth conversations. That are conversations that forward the brand, that forward the feeling about your company, that forward loyalty. And I would think that's what Wilma is about. I, I agree. I mean, I think it's such a challenge. And I, I think that message back to those product branding mentality would be, I don't care what you build, but you're no longer a product brand. You're a service brand. Yes. And, and don't look at other product companies Zappos. as your benchmark. Look at Zappos. Look at American Express. Look at companies who ver whose very service and entity is about that customer experience. And, and challenge yourself to model around them, not around another product company you consider to be a competitor. Right, so what you're saying, Sean, I think is that instead of being product focused, we wanna be conversation focused. And, we and wanna service be focused. Service, service, focused. service, service. It's all about service at the end of the day. So that goes to servitude leadership? Yes, absolutely, and service excellence and, and operations and digging into those touch points once again and really understanding successes and failures in it. How can we reach you online? Sean at AntsIView.com or AntsIView.com is our website. You can search for us. We're, we're pretty easy to, to find. And your Twitter handle? At MVP. Very cool. Thank you. Thanks a lot.